Hello, welcome to this presentation on connecting IBM Security Identity Manager to an HR feed using TDI. So iSIM comes with a, uh, an example on doing this and you can find it inside the uh, iSIM installation folder. Extensions, uh, item version number, examples, IDI integration. Um, click on the readme and uh, click on the link that corresponds to your TDI version and you'll see a, an easy to follow uh, example step-by-step -step guide on how to um, uh, feed data into ISIM using TDI. So there are basically uh, two mechanisms or two ways. One is using the item recon mechanism and the other one is through the use of uh, the JNDI feed mechanism. So in this example, we are going to use the JNDI feed mechanism. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is create the service in ISIM. So this is a uh, brand new installation of ISIM, so I don't have any uh, defined service yet. So we're going to pick the IDI data feed uh, service type. Give it a service name. The URL is used if you're going to use the, um, the uh, item recon mechanism. You need to provide a, a DSML uh, v2 server. Uh, in the URL. In our case, we're using the JNDI feed, so this parameter doesn't really uh, matter for us, so we're going to put not used to make it clear. User ID and password, we'll just pick agent. Agent, we're going to we're gonna need to put this in our TDI uh, assembly. Naming context, we'll put DCHR load and we'll leave the uh, the other fields uh, with their default values. Finish. Okay. Next, we're going to create our assembly line. Or our TDI project. To give it a name. We'll create one assembly line. And then we're going to need, um, so for our data source, uh, it can be anything. It can be a database, it can be a CSV, or it can even be a web service that wherever our, our uh, HR data is stored. So in my environment, in this environment, I just have a CSV file. So we're going to use a file connector and put it on the iterator mode. So I have it locally here. HR feed. Pick the CSV parser. And then test connection and there's our data so just to show you what I have in the CSV file so this is the CSV file I have uh, 300 names so it has uh, just a basic basic uh, employee attributes employee number given name, surname, telephone number, username, and status. So we're going to feed all that information into ISIM. All right. So we have our CSV file. Uh, for now, we'll just go ahead and drag all of that, put that into the um, work entry. Next, we're going to need the... Uh, connector to ISIM which is going to be the JNDI connector and we'll 
put it in the update mode provider URL this is a uh, static URL that points to the uh, DSML uh, event handler in ISIM so we'll just copy that from the example the tenant is optional we don't really need to put it in uh, I'll put the server name so that's that points to my ISIM installation and this is the uh, URL for the DSML uh, DSML2 event handler search base is going to need to match the search base that we put in in the service definition let me just copy the JNDI driver and we'll use a simple authentication method put in our username and password that we put that we entered in the uh, service definition and we'll keep the other parameters on the default okay all right So I'm going to change this, the search base, I'm going to put this value in a property. just to make it easier because we're going to need to put this in uh, the uh, CSV uh, CSV connector as well so instead of using that we'll make it use the property all right next we're going to transform the data so that the uh, the attribute names in the work entry would match the the attribute names in the, the LDAP attribute names in ISIM. So employee number is okay, given name is okay. Now for the status, our data in the CSV will have uh, either active or inactive. That doesn't really translate into a meaningful value in ISIM. So first of all, the status attribute name will change to ER person status so for the status we'll put red value So this is saying if the status in the CSV file is active, we're going to put 0 into ISIM. Otherwise, we'll put 1, which is inactive in ISIM. All right. The next is uh, we'll add a CN attribute. And we'll change that. We'll set that to... Give a name plus last name. We are also going to add an object class, an attribute. And we're going to use the inet.org person and er person item object classes.
and we're going to change the username attribute name in the work entry to UID and we're going to add a dollar DN attribute which is going to be um, it needs to follow a certain format for the UID call string we're gonna get the username and to that we will add the JNDI search space so we have it in the property property JNDI search space there it is okay that should be it for the CSV for the CSV side one thing I will do is for the first run I will limit it to just one one row of data before we, we let it run for, for the whole thing but before we run it we need to set the uh, JNDI uh, connector so we have all the uh, the attributes connector attributes we need we just need to provide the uh, the mapping so we'll go ahead and add all these attributes now for the modify mode we're going to disable object class and the DN the dollar DN attribute because this both these attributes are not supposed to change uh, during the uh, modify uh, mode next we need to set the link criteria for the JNDI connector go ahead and use a script so this is really just an LDAP filter UID so we're saying here that the link criteria for the JNDI connector is whatever the UID in the work entry matches the UID in ISIM before we run the solution for the first time we're going to add just a another component to dump the work entry and go ahead and run it so we read one entry from the CSV file for uh, Karen Rainey so this person should now be in our ISIM environment go to manage users and there she is so we'll go ahead and remove the limit from the CSV save run it so now it's all it's it's reading all 300 entries and pushing them into ISIM and when we go to ISIM we should see our people coming in And that's it for today. Thank you for watching.